everybody. We, um, you know, looking forward to this week going down to Tallahassee. I remember going down back in 2019, um, about the same time of the year, and um, you know, I remember not not getting out to a good start. I think we were down 21-0. Right, felt like right when we started the game, then battled back in the game and had a good chance to win. Did not win that game, but um, but looking forward to going back down um, this year. You know. Um, you know, looking back on the film from this weekend, um, obviously a very exciting game, and you know, proud of the way our guys fought, um, continue to fight all the way to the end. You know, the last 13 seconds to go in the game and um, to win that thing. And uh, you know, looking on it, I think offensively we played we played solid. I mean, I still think we had uh, several opportunities we could have got more yards out there. Um, you know, which is encouraging to say that we c you know can do better offensively. Um, you know, even though we had a pretty productive night. Um, defensively, you know, again, we played a, I think they were second ranked team offense in the country um, and, and held them 200 yards under their, their average and um, played well, um, you know, tackled well, still gave up a few big plays that we, that we don't need to give up, got to get better in that regard. Um, and then, um, you know, we do the solid, I think just solid performance against a good football team. You know, I, I hate it for uh, the quarterback who, uh, I think he broke his collarbone, so he'll be out for a while. I hate that for him on the last play. And, um, you know, this game, man, it's, uh, it's a tough game when you, you think about injuries. Um, you know, so, but again, we're looking forward to this week and, and, and having a great week of prep. That's where it all started for us last week. And um, but we need to come out with the same kind of energy that we had last week and, and go down and, and play a team in Florida State that has got a lot of talent and a lot of guys that can play, they, a lot of transfers that are in there. Uh, came in in the off season, um, took Notre Dame to no overtime the first week, and um, you know gave up the last play on it to lose to Jacksonville State, and then this past weekend, you know, played had six turnovers and a bunch of penalties, and really didn't give themselves a chance um, to win that game. So, um, but we know you know their backs are against the wall. We know we're, we're going to get their best shot when we go down there this weekend. So, question? Yeah, Scott Cameron with the Courier Journal. Uh, a lot of people got hurt against UCF. Came out, Jalen Mitchell, Trey Clark, Malik. Um, just an update on the injury status yeah. of the team, and then Malik specifically. How, how's his leg been since yeah. he's been off? Yeah, it's uh, you know our, our training room was full all weekend and today, uh, full as well. But but those guys will be practicing. They'll be good. You know, I just met with a bunch of them all ago and before this, before I came down here, and um, they're feeling a lot better. It was good to have an extra day in there. You know, Saturday. Um, you know, for us to get eight days for this game, that's a that's a great break that we need after playing you know three games in twelve days. So, um, but those guys are healing up. Uh, they should all, they should be good to go. Scott Ken Spencer, WHAS eleven. I'm sure you guys do a good job of blocking out outside noise. But for the program, how big was to have a moment like that, a win like that, right now? That was awesome. You know, I, I think Central Florida is a, a, obviously a really good football team, and and they have been good for years. And um, you know, they bring a lot of talent, a lot of speed, a lot of team speed. I thought they were, man, they were good in special teams. Very good punter, very good kicker. Um, I think just a solid football team. And for us to go go battle and, and get a good win like that, I mean, obviously, you know, you, you want to win every game you play. Um, but, to, but to be able to come out and, 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 and to get better. What, the one thing as a coach, you know, you want to be able to see your team continue to improve each week. And I, we've done that, um, you know. We did not play well at all. Obviously, the first half of Ole Miss, we played a lot better in the second half. We did some better things against EKU, and then I thought we did even better against you know these these guys from from Central Florida. So we got to continue that. We got to get better again this week as we go down there and play uh, Florida State. But um, but yeah, it was it was exciting. It was a great football game. If just as a fan, you know, I just it was it was fun to watch. Um, you know, got a lot of text messages from people all over the country. Just you know, man, that was an awesome game. You know, and uh, very entertaining. It was a clean game, you know, until the very <laughs> the last two interceptions. But um, not many penalties. I mean, it was just a good. It was a great college football game. So, uh, you know, for us to come out on top, it was tremendous, and um, it was very exciting. Scott Jody Dimling with Cardinal Authority. With you, I know you'd like to rotate guys on the line and, and keep guys mm -hmm. fresh. But when you have a game where you don't rotate guys because some guys aren't un aren't available or whatever, does it almost tempt you to stick with that lineup? Well, I mean, I, I still think we need to be able to rotate some guys just for the injury purposes, you know, and because those two guys, they could have played, but they would have been really emergency. Talking about Gonzalez and Boone, um, you know,
know, Kendra got in and played a few snaps. Um, but but you want to have that depth, you know. So we still want to be able to play some guys there and rotate some guys. I you know I did thought I thought that Hudson, you know, he played the whole game. He played really good. Um, you know, Trevor's got to be better at tackle. Um, you know, gave up some a couple pressures there, and uh, you know, so I do think I want Trevor to play, but I do think Gonzalez has got to play as well because he's so solid, you know, and he's very smart. Um, so you know, in a perfect world, you put five guys out there and let them go, but. Uh, but I also think that, that we need to continue to develop and get these guys better and better. So I, the only way to do that is, is play them, you know. And then, and as we go into game, we're looking to say, all right, who, who's playing the best, and that's the one that's going to get the most snaps, you know. So, um, but yeah, I thought I thought they did solid for the most part there. Um, you know, we have these three games. We've done a much better job in less tackles for loss this year and, and less sacks, you know. So those guys have done a pretty good job with that. Coach, this is Kent Taylor from Wave TV. Can you take us through this sequence of events that, that got Jalen Alderman on the field? And then, you know, any have you seen some things from him to make him mm -hmm. think that he's capable of making plays like that? Or was it just a completely shocking thing? Well, no. I mean, he, he's been a guy who's really all camp. Alderman, you know, kind of co turned the coach's head because he's smart. I mean, he's like, man, this guy knows exactly what we're, we're saying. We don't have to tell him over and over and over. And um, he, he was a good tacker. Coming out of high school, you know, really kind of caught our attention with that. And then when he got here, he's a mature freshman. And, um, you know, I think with that, you know, the coaches get a lot of confidence in him, you know. And, and then, you know, Monty went out. He got dinged on a play right before that. And, and so, you know, Coach, Coach D. Nick put in Alderman, and um, he was in the right place at the right time. Um, you know, you go back and watch the film, the ball was a little bit behind, but the receiver probably still should have caught it, and it kind of bounced off of him, and then and then right in the Alderman, and then he knew what to do with it when he caught it. You know, it was a huge play. He got a couple good blocks down the sideline, um, and then you know took it all the way to the house. But um, but yeah, he you know he's certainly going to be in the mix, you know, to get some more playing time. I mean, I think he's a he's obviously a good football player and um, a, you know very heady player. Two questions. One, uh, Scott, did, have you seen the video of Rocco celebrating on the sideline? <laughs> I have. I have. And what did you think? I thought he looked like a, maybe like a fifth grader uh, at Christmas or something. I mean, <laughs> just all giddy. He got a new bike for Christmas, and, you know, he's jumping for joy. But, uh, man, it was good to see. I mean, I, you know, um, but I think he wasn't the only one. I mean, I'm looking around. I'm seeing a lot of people jumping up and down for joy. I mean, that, that was a, a certainly a cause for celebration. And, um uh, you know, it, it was uh, it was a great it was just a great moment, a great scene, and um, but yeah, I'm glad somebody caught that. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, more more seriously, uh, there's been a lot of non-experts who've commended your game plan, your play calling. Was there any kind of philosophical change, or just the plays worked better this week? I think the plays just worked better. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, we uh, we felt really good about the plan going in. I thought our coaches did a great job last week. You know. I'll be at a short week, but did a great job of finding ways that we could do some things um, to get some guys free. And, and then the guys went out and executed. Now, you know, and listen, it takes it takes all that. It takes a, a really good plan. It takes the buy-in from the players. It takes the energy um, and the know-how to go out there and get that done. And it really, we just everybody did that. And as I said, we you know there were several plays that we still could have got a lot more yards um, that we left out on the field that I think will continue to get better. Um, you know, but it was just some of those plays were hitting. I mean, they were hitting Friday night, and and they were fun to see. You know, a lot of times though, it seems like this year, you know, the first two games, you know, we get we're in a play call, and then the defense is doing something a little bit different than we want. And then Friday night, they kind of cooperated a little bit better, and uh, and some of those plays looked a lot better because of that. Scott Ken again, WHAS 11. Jalen already has a T-shirt out that saw it says Mr. Pick Six. Have you already placed an order for your T-shirt? <laughs> no, I didn't know that. I, I mean, I need. I will now, though. That, that's pretty big. I want to. I want to put that one up uh, for keepsake. But, uh, but yeah, that's. Uh, he'll remember that for the rest of his life, no matter how old he gets. Um, what, what a tremendous play and um, what a story. You know, that's your first play and you get in and, and that and get a get a pick six to win the game against Central Florida. I mean, that, that that's a big time for him. And um, I'm sure as the years go by, it'll get longer and longer and be a 100-yard interception return here probably pretty soon. And Scott, yep. on the offense, Malik's, it just looked like UCF had no answer for Malik's legs, mm -hmm. whether it was a scramble or a, a designed QB run. Yeah. 
how important is that for you all in, in what you do in the run game? Um, and how, how does that affect what you do as a play caller? Yeah. No, it's huge for us to be able to have the ability for the quarterback runs. Um, I think, you know, a lot of that depends on what defense you're playing that week, you know, and I think the way they played theirs, it kind of set up for some, some Q runs, and we thought that going into the game that he was going to be a big part in that. Um, he, he obviously is a great runner, and he just puts a lot of pressure on, on defenses um, if you're able to do that. And, you know, we'll, we'll see as, we, as the season goes on, are we going to be able to utilize him in that run game? We, we always want to be able to have that ability. Um, you know, again, but I don't want him to run it, you know, 20 some times either. He's not a running back, you know, he's a quarterback. So, um, but we want to we want to take advantage of that when it presents itself. And, and we felt good about it. He had some great runs, got some drives started, you know, and man, one of the biggest plays I thought was um, of the game, we're down seven, we're backed up on, I don't know, minus six or seven and it's third and long and we go to Q draw and he gets the first down and that gets it started. I think I may have went 95 yards or something on that drive, but I mean, it was, that was huge play. Because um, the play before that, they brought pressure and almost sacked him in the, almost a safety. And that would have been 9 nothing. You know, that, that, that whole thing could have changed the whole outcome of that game. And then the next play, we get a cue draw for a first down, and next thing you know, we're, we're, we're on. So, um, yeah, his ability to, to run is huge. Scott, Dominique Gates with the Courier Journal. As you get ready for Florida State, when you were looking at UCF, you looked at the game plan thing, need to open mm -hmm. things up a little bit. Do you see any similarities or differences in terms of prepping for Florida State and how you want to, I guess, approach this game? Well, I mean, you know, we're just now getting into the prep of Florida State. You know, they, they do some things that are different than um, than Central Florida. You know, they have some good athletes on defense. That basically, it's a, it's really a new defense compared to last year personnel-wise. They got a lot of transfers, a lot of new players. One of their best players came in from Georgia, number 11. Um, I think his last name is Johnson, maybe, but um, he, he's outstanding. Um, they have some good players, and um, you know, so we got we got we got to obviously find ways to be able to move the ball. You know, I, th I thought Wake Forest did a really nice job last week against them, and they moved the ball pretty good, and, and, and scored you know enough points to win it. So um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how the game plan goes, and obviously we got to find ways to run, throw, and, and do a little bit of both. <coughs> Scott and Matt me have Sports Illustrated. In the first couple games, it seemed like the energy, effort, and execution were kind of lacking at times, but then took a massive uptick against UCF. Going on the road for your ACC opener, how do you plan on carrying that throughout the week to make sure all of those three don't regress heading mm -hmm. into Florida State? Well, <clears throat> I mean, it, it, you know, I think our team took a, a big step forward Friday night and last week in their preparation and, um, and the energy. So they kind of set the standard. That's where we want to at least be right there, if not better. <clears throat> and so it starts during the week in practice. I thought last week our, our, our chase teams, our scout teams, did a great job giving them, giving us good looks for Central Florida. I think it starts right there. I think, um, and then it, then our guys, the, the the offense and defense, they really fed off of that, and man, they just it, it, you're right. I mean, they came out with great energy, and, and the, that was a, the sideline was as live as I've seen our sideline probably since the bowl game, and because um, I remember that that bowl game sideline was awesome. We got down 14, they didn't flinch. You know, we came back and ended up you know really taking over the game in that bowl game, and it, but it felt very similar to that this weekend. Our guys didn't care what the score was. They were flying around, playing hard. The, the, the sideline was into it. The stadium was rocking. Um, it was just a great atmosphere, and we got to continue to, to feed off of that sideline. This one would be different because now we're only traveling 70-some players, you know, compared to having our whole team on the sideline here at home. So it will be different. That's one of the things we just talked about with our, our leadership group just then. And um, so, yeah, we got to have a great, great week of preparation. That's where it starts. On the, the double pass, uh, even the TV announcer's like, well, it's got to be a run here. Yeah. Uh, and then you throw the double pass and it scores. Can you just uh, describe sort of the whatever you might have been looking for to say, all right, here's the moment to call this play. What was happening there? You're like, all right, let's do it now. And obviously yeah, well, I think, you know, where we were at, um, the time of the game, we felt like we needed a score. Um, I think it was close to getting ready to be right before half. And um, we kind of wanted to be right middle. And just so happy we were kind of right middle. And we were, you know, I don't even know where it was, plus 35, plus 40. I was like, man, that's a great place to do it. And, um, you know, we just called it, and the guys executed it. That, that, that execution on game day was the best that it was all week. During the week, I think I mentioned that after, after the game, I mean, Braden didn't throw it well all week. We were, you know, protection was not great. And, you know, but you just felt like, listen, let's, our guys are in groove. Let's, let's roll with it. And, um, man, Cooley did a great job. What about watching the film? of selling like he's blocking. The linebacker turned his head, and then there he goes, and he's wide open, and it was a great throw. Um, just really good execution. That's just those plays like that just give you great momentum. 
you know, and um, and they're they're awesome plays. And our guys like like those type plays. It's ironic, you know, they they ran the play, you know, to score earlier in the game, the trick play, the same play we ran at Ole Miss, and um, so um, and then you know we got hit that, but it was fun, and uh, you know we got to try to continue to have some of those plays. The guys like to run them. Scout, I, I know you don't really. I know Brian runs the defense, but uh, from an offensive standpoint, Brian and the defense run a lot of nickel and dime. They've been a lot of multi-DB sets. As an offensive coach, how difficult is it to prepare for a defense mm -hmm. like that when they're also aggressive and blitzing and can also drop eight? Yeah. Yeah, they did some They did some good things. I mean, you, you, they have to do that, though, when you're playing a team like Central Florida with as many wide receiver sets as they have. Um, you know, I do think playing Ole Miss helped us against Central Florida. There's no question about that with the tempo and – you know, all the different things that they can do off of that. Um, but it is difficult, you know. It's a little bit what Ole Miss did to us in that first game. You know, they had the five DBs in there, kind of that umbrella look and not giving up the big plays and, um, you know, which made it difficult on us to move the ball. And and so the thing that you don't want to do is give up the big plays. So it's disappointing when their first touchdown, when they hit the long ball. That, that was one of the most disappointing things we did defensively. Um, in that game, and you want to keep, you want to make those teams drive it, and that's one thing that I thought. You know, we're, we kind of play off of each other. You know, offense and defense. I thought our offense, we had great tempo Friday night. You know, we ended up running, I don't know, 12 or 14 more plays than Central Florida, which is crazy. I would never thought that going into that game, um, but we've occupied the ball very well in the first three games, and that helps our defense. I think in the first half we had the ball 20 minutes, they had it 10. So our, our defense is fresh, you know, and, and that's the key is to be able to keep fresh, you know, defensive players and keep their offense off the field. Scott, when it comes to Florida State, they look like a completely different team against Notre Dame than they have these last two weeks. When you're watching film of them, what have you seen as far as the biggest difference? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. They, um, it's different styles, though. You know, Wake Forest offense is completely different than Notre Dame's, you know. Notre Dame lines up in a bunch of tight end sets and, you know, kind of crowds it in there. And Notre Dame's most success they had was, was throwing some vertical deep balls. Um, you know, Wake Forest is kind of spreading you out and they're running the slow, you know, mid zone. And those RPOs off of it. So it's a little bit different. And I, I just think in this Wake Forest game, it, it, the turnovers. I mean, Florida State was moving the ball and they would turn it over. They had six turnovers, three fumbles, three interceptions. And then they had some costly uh, penalties that really hurt them. Um, Take away some of those things, it's probably going to be a ball game. Now, I know they didn't. You know, obviously you got you got to take care of the ball, but um, that's to me was the main difference in in, in both of those games. But because um, because you watch the film, the guys are running around. They they can run. They're fast. They're big. They're strong. Um, Notre Dame really didn't run the ball on them at all, and uh, you know so it, it's it's interesting. Um, but I think it came down to the big thing was just the turnovers and the mistakes. I think that was the biggest difference when you look at those both of those games. Scott, how do you prepare for the quarterback situation for them? Yeah. Uh, because Milton, Travis started, then Milton was in, did that against Notre Dame. How do you kind of prepare for that? Yeah, because they're two totally different quarterbacks. You know, Travis is a great runner. Um, you know, we saw that last year when he was here, ran around here, made some big-time plays. Um, so far this year, that's a, a strength of their offense, running the football. That's probably their strength is, is the rushing game. They have two really good running backs that can run. Um, and he's, he's in there. He get added that dimension with the Q runs. And then Milton gets in, and, you know, he's that savvy passer um, that they don't want to run as much. And so, yeah, we're going to have to, you know, really you almost have, I won't say two different game plans, but it's two different thought processes depending on who the quarterback is. Um, and then, you know, of course, Chubb is, is there as well. He hadn't played this year, but he's, you know, I saw him on the sideline just, you know, watching the TV copy. So um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how they're going to – I would assume they're going to continue to rotate. They've been doing that all year. And, um, you know, we'll have to make the calls of just whoever's going to be in the game. You know, Travis went out of the game and didn't come back in. I'm not sure if he's the injury there or not. But, um, you know, but um, we'll anticipate it, all of them being ready to go and, and, and having a good game plan for each one that's in there. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs>